we all have, you could say, a habitual state where we reside in most of the time. For you two, for example, you're right here. Okay. And grief, again, you'll tend to, to oscillate a bit, but what we tend to do, and this is the big mistakes, I talked about this yesterday at the free tours, we aim too high. You know, you're here, or you might even be like, again, between the two, where it's like you're, you're feeling this grief, there's tends to go a bit of apathy, and then it's like, you don't want to experience anger, but you want to experience love. <laughs> you're like, and every time you kind of hit this, you go right back down, back down. So we aim too high, we fail, and oftentimes we just stay stuck. Now we will experience pockets of other states. So you might be in grief and you'll experience a little bit of purpose, a little bit of courage, a little bit of love, but then you just find your way back to what you know. Okay. Now, biggest key, just aim for the next level up. Wherever you're at, aim for one up, then one up, then one up. For someone in apathy, who's very cut off from feeling, or the, the general theme there is just withdrawn. It's kind of you've given up, okay? Um, in terms of feeling, it looks like you before we got to you. It looks like you yesterday, basically. You know, just very robotic, up in your head. Um, you have a little bit of that too, okay? Um, just kind of like withdrawing and that refusal to feel. When you're in this state, there's massive resistance to feeling some kind of grief all the time. You're in this state for a reason. There was something that was too much to handle at some point in time that you just closed yourself off to yourself. You can't get there until you go through what it is you're closed off to. In terms of apathy, what this also means is allowing yourself to do, or to do basically whatever you can to establish some hope. Because in this state, it feels like there is no hope. One thing that will give you hope that is counterintuitive and that the mainstream will promote is become a victim. If you're in apathy, being a victim is moving up. It's great advice, right? Like if you, for example, stop feeling like a victim and just start feeling worse and worse and worse, you'd go down to apathy. Like what's the point? I'll never find love. I'll never find a girl, et cetera, et cetera. And then like you move down. So from down here going up saying, hey, it's not your fault. It's, you know, it's that person. It's just like this kind of like, instead of like, what's the point? Whatever. It's, oh, poor me. I would, but this thing. And then the general theme is always feeling sorry for yourself. Whatever happens to you, whatever adversity is thrown to you, it always links to, I take responsibility a bit, poor little me, crying, so on and so forth. That's what you resort to as well. It's like put some confrontation instead of like boundary. There's that pull towards feeling sorry for yourself. People have that when they get rejected as well. It's like you go out, you say hi to someone rejected, and you're just crushed. It's like you play a video game and like you fail. Instead of being like, oh. It's like, okay, let's try again. Same event, but people at different levels, okay? Now, when you're in victimhood, this is when you're, you have to hear like that harsh talk where it's like, okay, for you, it's stop being a little bitch. For you, it's time to get fucking mad. Time to experience that anger you refused to experience back then. And to be clear here, it does also mean that sometimes back then, experiencing that anger was too much. It doesn't mean you had to experience back then. And this is very key. Um, you'll see people talk about this when it comes to trauma um, with animals. So for example, if there's a threat, the animal will go into like this you know, fight or flight state. Is it time for the animal to experience like fear or feel sorry for itself? Fuck no, it's time to survive. For you at that point, if you might have experienced the anger, it's like you would have done stuff you might have regretted, it would, might have ruined your life. So it's time to survive. But the key is once you've survived, now it's time to experience it. But what we do is we just keep living in this survival. Okay. So in grief, it's take responsibility. Oh, but then that's scary. Good. Put yourself even in scary situations or get mad. Don't forgive. Think of all those people who screwed you over. Doesn't that make you mad? Don't you want to do something about it? Don't you want to prove them wrong? That's what you got to tap into. Once you're in anger, however, now you got to start forgiving. If you say forgive them here, oh, it's just more poor me. But here, moving up, crying is good. Here, it just kind of fuels it. Here, it's time to forgive, okay? Courage is when you finally start taking some action and you're just kind of fumbling around. There tends to be a lot of procrastination, focusing on the wrong things, putting things off, so on and so forth. It's kind of, it's more of a neutral state. Desire is like your ego kicks in. It's like, oh, I can do this. What are people gonna think? So on and so forth. Um, this is the person who tends to be a little bit more try hard. 
Um, always trying to like one up others, always trying to look cool, so on and so forth. Purpose is when you let go of this and you discover, okay, instead of just doing anything else always for approval for others, I kind of discover that innate drive. What do I actually feel inspired to do? And then love is more of the state of acceptance, abundance, so on and so forth, okay? But this tends to be the model. All of you can find one area you reside in the most and then you all have different pockets.